It's Mini Prime Time with your host, the incredibly handsome Will Friedel. Our special guest tonight, Liam O'Brien. Tonight's episode is brought to you by the Arsequeef Jiff Emporium. It's a funny name for an even funnier dude. And now, let's get to brushing! Hello, my mini maniacs. I'm your host, Will Friedel, and backwards walking guy, triangle, triangle. Okay, why is the prompter in papyrus font? Can we change this? Can we change it? Because I don't, okay, wait, wingdings, really? It's a circle and a squiggly thing. Let's go back to the regular. Nope, just a color, just another color. That's my mother's phone number. There we go, okay. Hey, we're here with Liam O'Brien. I always thought you were the shorter one. Yeah. Is the sense of dread normal for the show? Pretty much from everything I've heard. It's a pretty great show, but we don't know. We oh. just started shooting it. Okay. So, I got some questions here. Are you in? I think the doors are locked from the outside. I so. think they are too. It's a fire safety thing. So, it says here, and I think I'm wrong, that you play a mean banjo. I'd like to hear some of that. That's, that's kind of... That's it. Now, is it true that you were on the 1997 Smash Mouth tour? They, they, you went on the Warp tour for a little while. You had that thing that nobody talks about, but you were with Smash Mouth for a little while. No, they told me that I would eventually, but they never, you know. So sorry to hear that. Thank you for bringing it up. Well, let's get a little more personal, if that's okay. What's okay. it like to be married to Laura Bailey? Boy, what do I do with that one? We've got one more. This is by a Marjorie Hanfeld of Buffalo, New York, wants to know, what was it like to have Jason Momoa as a sparring partner, and is that as sexy as it sounds? It is definitely as sexy as it sounds. We thought so. He likes to be dominated. Dominated. Head, yeah. Right here, you heard it. Mini prime time. Love you, Jason. But let's talk about why you're really here. Okay. You're here because you're on the the, the cuticle roll. Beautiful. Pardon me. Mm -hmm. Huge show, uh, I've been told. Now you play the dirt wizard. Is that right? Uh, yeah. And could you tell us a little bit about him or her? He's a real sad guy. Okay. Has made some real bad choices. Sure, sure. Thinks that he can overcome it with a positive attitude and stick to itiveness. And yep. what's his name? His name is Caleb Widogast. Caleb, truly one of the greatest characters of the Mighty Nine. So, are you ready to paint? Our lesson today is to convey character by creating realistic dirt, grime, and corrosion effects through a technique known as stippling. Our resident painting master, Ian Phillips, has already applied a white base primer and basically painted everything, except the effects, which we're gonna do. So if you wanna see everything Ian used for Caleb, visit critroll.com. For today's lessons, you're gonna need a high gloss brown, some sand for corrosion effects, and some high gloss red for blood, and a dark brown wash to finish it all up. So. Mm. He looks like a dirt wizard. Yeah. But from what I've heard, you think the dirtier the better. I like him dirty. Like Momoa. Huh? We'll get back to that story in a bit. Don't even worry about it. So, one of the things we talk about is there's different kinds of painting techniques. There's also different kinds of paints. Some of the ones we're using today are gonna be called technical paints. So the paint itself is not just a paint, but actually has kind of an effect in the paint. So the corrosion one that we're gonna use, once it dries, you're gonna get a little kind of coffee ground kind of nastiness to everything you put it on, which is okay. pretty cool. That's my every morning, so let's we've do got, it. Well, there you go. We're gonna give you a little bit. Mm, and a little bit for me. Mm, like that. Brush size right now doesn't matter too much. Okay. So. I'm gonna go for like a medium. That's is kind that what of that is? where I'm going too. I might go a little bit of a medium. This one looks too fat. This one, it can That's be. Right. This is this is for more if you wanted to cover like the entire back of the cloak or the coat. Okay. Then you can get a bigger one like this and almost dry brush effect. You're really good at painting. I'm okay, Ishley. You've been doing it a lot. I though. have been doing more of it than is probably healthy for my relationship. But oh, okay. um, it is still a wonderful pastime, a just, great hobby. Just as gratifying as love, though. Well, I think so. Mm -hmm. At least with this, I know when I'm done. Which I think is kind of a cool thing. Positive attitude. So this is where stippling is gonna come in. This is detailing work, okay. but it's also your character. So you can have at how dirty you want them, where you want them dirty, and then when we get into the blood, it'll be, was he just in a fight? Mm -hmm. Is you know is there blood on his coat? 
and this is kind of, you get to play. But the cool thing we're doing is you can use brush strokes if you like, Yeah. but with stippling, you're really gonna be kind of taking a little bit of the paint and just, like dirt in real life, just kind of hitting little areas that you want him covered. We're just gonna poke him. We can poke him a little bit. Okay. And remember with this stuff, a little goes a long way. Okay. So sometimes you might want to either use that or use your thumb no. and just take a little bit of it off. All right. And then uh, we dirty. Mm -hmm. Love that. Well, it's kind of up to you where you want to put the stuff. But that being said, there are definite patterns. Mm -hmm. You know, you want the mini to have a story that Caleb just fell down in the dirt. So boom, he's down. The back of the elbows would be nailed. Yeah. That kind of thing. The bottom of the coat, if he's dragging through kind of mud. His scarf got dragged scarf through it. Scarf got dragged through it. All the little stuff is what really gives it the detail and makes it your mini. I was really impressed with your banjo playing for the record. Thank you. Do you know what my wife did at the start of this campaign? She told me my D&D character smelled bad. And then it's stuck forever. Really? Laura does that. I stay with her though because I know she's always gonna be working, so I feel like I'll be taken care of. See, that's important, because she's very talented yeah. at what she does. I'm like medium talented, so. Well, I'm impressed For with me, how you I'm ignore what everybody says about you. What I like to do is internalize it. Put it in a little box. Like a tight little ball, right? And you shove it down. Yeah. This is what I learned too. One of my therapists told me that. The eighth one, I think. Did they did they say to just just to hug the internet? They did tell me to believe everything I read. That's been helpful. All of it. Yeah. Will, why does it look like you put your thumb in your butt? It's an interesting question. There's two possible answers. The one I'm going to give you mm -hmm. is that it's a great way to wipe the paint off and then go right to the mini. Mm -hmm. So you don't you're not going like this because so you while can it's stay there. Yeah. Well, it's also not that big a deal with a brush this size. Mm -hmm. When you go to the super, what are honestly some of them are called the psycho brushes that are really small. Okay. You'll get one drop of paint, and by no joke, by the time you go from your palette to your mini, it's dry. Oh. So you'll go. So if you stay here and you do a quick thing and then you hit the mini, you, then you've got no time for the paint to dry. Oh. Yeah. Oh. They dry real fast. Oh, you're gonna knuckle him up. See, I'm gonna, I, I, I'm gonna go a different way with his knuckles. I'm gonna blood his knuckles. Oh up. man, brawler, he was brawler, just in Caleb. A fight. Sure, just throwing down. Because somebody took the last ho ho. He looks better the dirtier he is. That's cool. So we're gonna use the same technique with the stippling. Okay. With the blood, but you can gloop a little more with the blood, which is you actually kind of cool at certain places. So I'm gonna show you a kind of a cool effect that I'm gonna do here. So we're gonna say he was just in a big fight. Mm -hmm. Maybe he got a cut on his hand. So boom, his hand is really gonna have some blood on it. But as he's standing there, it is also dripped and pooled right below his hand. Because mm. it's been dripping. Okay. I'm gonna do some crazy, I'm gonna do some different. Do it! He got hit in the head with a rock. Boom! Oosh. See? Sorry, Caleb. It's been a rough, Day for Khalib. To be fair, if a fly bounced onto his head, it would have this kind of damage effect. Oh, really? Yeah, is he uh, not have the strongest? He is the typical glass cannon. Oh, no. Yeah. You liking how you're looking? Yeah, I am. Maybe he even touched that wound, so. That's, you can easily do that. Blood on his hands, blood on the wheels. Yeah, that blood on his hands. Blood on his face. One tiny little. That looked pretty good. Let's see, let's compare. That's all, ooh, you really took, bam, he got yeah. some damage. Yeah. Loving that, mm -hmm. love that. Okay, so then to finish it up, is mm -hmm. we're gonna do a mud effect. There's different kind of mud effects. There's wet mud, there's dry mud. You can actually use real dirt, coffee grounds, any kind of stuff you want to use on the base. And then when you wash it, everything looks the same. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go in, uh -huh. and we are gonna mud up some shoes. And again, if it mixes with some of the blood on the ground, all the better. the better. I imagine the cat next to him. I think that's a cat. That's, uh, that's uh, a chinchilla. Anyway. Chinchilla probably has mud as well and has been tracking it a little bit. What's your feeling on cats? Uh, I had a cat for years. I love my cat. My cat and I came to an understanding that like, I just walk in and go, what's up? And she'd be like, hey, how's it going? Okay, and that so was kind of our relationship. Like roommates then? Yeah. Kind of mud in some spots. I, I wrecked Frumpkin. That sounded like a euphemism. Yeah. It sounded like a Momoa euphemism. That's what I call him. 
And again, some people think less is more, some people think more is more. Yeah, I'm it's liking what it. what you wanna do, you digging what you got? I do, I feel like if I keep going, it'll he'll just, he'll just be like he's a mud wrestler. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that dry for just a couple seconds and we are gonna wash. Now wash is a very thin ink-like paint. Mm -hmm. um, it pools better than other things and it just highlights shading and cracks and it gets into every little nook and cranny. Sometimes it looks a little wet, sometimes it doesn't. It's a really cool little effect. We can go right out of the bottle for this one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of go over the stuff we just did, especially the corrosion kind of effect mm -hmm. and the mud kind of effect. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna hit with our brown wash here. Okay. And here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna, we're gonna go a little more advanced technique. We're gonna take two brushes. Oh. So you're gonna have one brush that's wet and then you're gonna put it on where you wanna put it on and then if there's too much, you're gonna take the dry brush and touch it and whisk it away. Whoa. So boom, boom, Whoa. boom. And are we sharesies on this We're point? gonna sharesies. So you just boom like that right over what we've done. I don't know if that's too much, but I'm gonna try it. Hey, you try it, and if it's too much in some places, so you just whisk wow. it right away. And it holds up in the places you want it to hold up. It glosses in places. And it's a very cool effect. This dude is dirty. He's dirty, that's how you like him. He is the dirt wizard, which is his technical name, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a 5e class. That's what I thought, the dirt wizard. Oh, he's a mess. Mess is good. Yeah, it looks like he's been crawling through the sewer. I'm pretty happy, if I'm honest. Yeah, I'm pretty, I am do too. You like, you like your uh, Caleb? I do. Let's, uh, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison, if we can. Wow. Sick. Ooh, he's dirty. You want to touch, we, touch we like, wizards? We do. Mm -hmm. Nice. See, you got kind of the gloss in the back of the jacket there. Yeah, I think. Totally cool. You you are, you have painted Caleb on a regular day, and I've done Caleb on a on a bad day. On a tougher day. And then you know what you do is the second you have him your DM, I think it's the hippie kid with the bracelets, when he says something that happens, and now something bad has happened to Caleb, you reach over and you grab your even dirtier mini and oh, boom, sorcery. Drop it. Well, Cheers. thank you so much. Cheers. You've done a wonderful job. Thank you. We've learned some stippling. We've learned some stuff, and we were happy you were here. Love that, love that, love that. Hey. Thanks for teaching me how to paint. Larry O'Kanan, thank oh, you nice. so much. Oh man, well, this was a wonderful, wonderful show. And today we learned how to convey character through a variety of paint effects, including a corrosion effect, a mud effect, and a blood effect, all with a stippling technique to help us create realistic dirt and grime. Next week, we're gonna have Barbara Walters here, who's gonna teach us how to work in monotone. That's gonna be a great show. If you wanna paint Caleb or any of the Mighty Nine, our mini sets from Steamforge are available in the Crit Roll shop or wherever Steamforge minis are sold. Stay colorful, you maniacs. And don't ever forget, it's not the size of your mini, it's how you paint it that matters. Thanks, everybody. Has the air been on the whole time? I feel long inside. Don't you?